I'm David Lansenberg. I'm a director of photography. I was born in France, raised in Spain, grew up in the States. I've been in LA now for some 20 years plus. I started off as a production assistant back when I was 16, 17 in New York, because my brother was a camera assistant at the time. I've got an older brother. He went on to become a DP himself. And, uh, and I continued the same footsteps as he did, just being a camera assistant and working my way from there. Every project is different. Some directors will have a very specific idea of how they want to approach the look and tone and how to tell the story visually. And some others, they really truly rely and they, they appreciate what you bring to the table. And, but it is a dialogue between the director and, and the director of photography. As the cinematographer, you're really there to accomplish what the director wants. But the, the process is, is very unique to every person. I don't know any one director that does things the same way. Even if it's the same director and you have worked with one director multiple times, actually probably 12 or 15 times now, and the process to which we arrive is not always the same. But the idea of where it starts with the performance and everything follows from there, I must say I'm a big fan of that just because you're able to tell the story, I think, in a much less uh, strict way. So I'm, I'm firmly be believe in that. All the cameras out there are amazing. Certainly in the HD world, it's taken leaps and bounds to what they originally were. For me, I think probably these days with HD, it starts with the lenses and then it follows with the camera. One of the things I think I did a show about a year ago and it was a period piece. I think it was West Palm Beach, 1969. And uh, it was exciting because with period, you, you really can bring a lot of great influences and great photography from, from that period. So we were able to develop something for that show that was very unique. We were able to tweak the lenses, we were able to build our own lookup table, our own lot. And then the cameras where we felt would be the right choice as far as the, the, the color science and what we bring to the table. I was asked to do some tests by the wonderful people at Harry. So we treated these tests as if it was getting ready to potentially test for some hair and makeup prior to doing a show which was fun. And then I got to experience uh, all these new lenses that I had not worked with before, the DNAs. I knew the signatures from working prior to them, but I had never worked with the Alexa 35. And we also got to work, which I'd never done with the, uh, the volume wall, which is a smaller version, I imagine, of the, the big dome. It was very exciting and, and great to come up with something with Cassidy, who built this wonderful uh, desert-like environment. Working with the Unreal operator, during our tests, along with our gaffer, Sean, was an incredibly informative experience. I had never worked with the volume before. I really did appreciate the amount of possibilities that one can do with the volume, be the lighting, be the movement of the clouds, the movement of the stars. Sometimes maybe you don't need to go to certain places in the world anymore um, as the technology gets more and more improved, but I'm, I'm, I'm very, very impressed with what we've been able to do in such a short amount of time. To be able to dial the, the color of the sky or the clouds, the movement, the shape, the dimension, and within the lighting of how the Unreal operator is controlling the dimmer board as well as the lights as far as the colors while picking a section of the volume wall, and that's basically um, taking in tow the dimmer board and which color that should be for some of the lights that we're augmenting, such as backlights and so forth. So that was pretty spectacular to see them both working. I'm excited that Ari came out with the Alex 35 because as much as I like the large format, my knowledge and my education has been with 35 millimeter film, 35 millimeter sensor and so forth. And while with the larger format cameras, sometimes you do have to pump just a bit more light to get more depth of field, and with the 35, I feel like it's bringing it back a little bit more back to basics as far as the, the sizes and even, you know, the usage of certain lenses that will only work with the 35 sensor. I think it's very important to have textures built into a camera. I think it's a new tool and it gives more options ultimately to the image. Uh, one of the things that we would do in the past is, you know, whether we flare the camera or push lights into the lens just to give it some texture but adding more options built into the camera that are baked in sometimes into the footage. As far as textures, I think is a great idea. I mean, HD can be very crisp at times. 
So it's nice to, to, to give it a little bit of character for sure. I think we looked at the nostalgic texture, which was uh, one of the heavier textured pieces. And uh, I did like it for blending in the talent in front of the camera, along with the volume wall that was in the background. And, and it, it, it did great. I like that. We also tested some lighter ones. We tested the high clarity and that was very nice. Definitely had a, a nice sharpening feel without it feeling too clinical. So that was nice. Yeah, I really like that. What was interesting is really starting the test where it's a bit of a full nighttime mode, where we have our talent coming up to the camera and going very dark and bringing it to uh, the course of a day and a bit of an accelerated tempo in the background, a very bright day and back tonight. So I think that'll be a nice telltale sign as far as how it all feels and how it can blend in together. I'm curious to know more. Can't wait to sit in the telecine or the DI and, and see how much we can dig in. The other half of the fun and knowing more on a good 4K monitor and experimenting more with it. We really worked with one lens today, uh, which was the 35 DNA. I hadn't worked with it before. I had a bit of a, a softer feel to it. And we also did use the signature lenses. I think we put the same 35, so the 35 DNA and a 35 signature and very different lenses altogether. The signature a little bit sharper and still giving great three-dimensionality, but they're, they don't have so much of a veil or necessarily a softness to that. You know, I did put in a low-count filter in addition to uh, the haze that we had in the air, which does react really nicely sometimes with a little bit of backlight or a little bit of flaring into the lens. It gives a little bit more of a bloomy veil to, to the image. It really was quite effective when we have the, the sun rising as uh, we feel the backlight on our talent. That also was pushing into the glass and through the low-count, and that kind of gave it more of a surreal effect, helping the image, I think, to increase the sort of uh, artifact you would imagine that if the sun rising over a real Sahara would do to the camera. I would tell younger cinematographers to really pay attention, to be patient, to keep really an open eye, and to know that everything starts with the performance and things follow. Where you put the camera, how the lighting affects the scene, but really, it always starts with the performance first. I think also to remember that you're only as good as your crew. You really have to have a solid crew and people you enjoy working with. And when you have that, you can do almost anything. And that's very important I think, to have. What's my favorite thing about being a cinematographer? I think there's moments where I have found myself still trying to find that tone or that scene or that moment Every show is different, but there's moments within that, within those scenes, within these environments, and you're trying to find that special moment, a special look, and, and everything slowly comes together. And the exciting part is when it's all coming together. The performance is great, the lighting, the camera movements, everything that you're trying to come across is coming together really above and beyond what you were hoping for. And that's always very exciting when that happens. Not all the time, but when it does, it's, it's great. <laughs>